Hey guys, Ken Smith. Ken Smith Fishing. Uh, so this is going to be the, uh, I don't know, I'm going to reverse the order on these a little bit because this is going to be a lot easier footage to put up than all the practice footage from the week. This will be the BFL tournament. And before I get to the BFL tournament, don't forget, uh, this week we have the uh, Skeeter Bass Champs down here. Uh, it's going to be a big tournament. It's going to be a fun tournament. It's going to be a big turnout. 20 grand first place. If you're in a qualifying Skeeter, there's extra money. If you're in one of their motor group, uh, the, the guys who sponsor them, there's extra money there, so there's just a ton of money to be won. I, I think it's probably one of the highest payouts uh, in team fishing, uh, actually probably in fishing as a percent of, uh, percent of entry fees. Uh, they've done a great job growing Bass Champs, and Kevin and I are going to fish, and I'm looking forward to it. And as interesting as it is, now if Kevin caught some fish, uh, actually Kevin won the, uh, won the BFL, tournament bass fishing is all about making decisions. And uh, I made a decision, you'll see in the close of this video, uh, that I don't really regret, uh, although I could have put a few dollars in my pocket. Uh, so I don't have a lot of my fish on footage, but let me kind of take you through what led me to turning my fish loose at the end of the day. Um, so I, I was on some shallow fish, and I really thought I could catch a big stringer, uh, if not potentially a one, one inch stringer off some shallow fish. And I ran in there yesterday morning. Uh, it's not on film because there's nothing to show. But I had one eat a bait, uh, eat, a, eat a swim bait, and I pulled it about five handle cranks and it come off. I don't know if it was a 10-incher or an 8-pounder. It was, I think it was closer to an 8-pounder than a 10-incher because I had caught some pretty good fish in there in practice. But there was absolutely no wind on that water, and the water had cleared up. It's all the way in the back of a pocket, and there had been some, some dirty water in there. So I made one pass through it and smartly left and went out and fished along the edge of the hay grass uh, where I had got a few bites, uh, fished some more shallow stuff with a swim bait where I had got a bunch of bites. And about 11 o'clock, I don't have a fish. My partners had not had a bite. I think I had caught two or three short fish. I might have one of those on camera, and if I do, I'll stick it in here. But I was struggling, and so I went out to sort of my, you know, I've got a Hail Mary spot where I can always catch a limit. And I ran out there, I'm gonna say it was 11 or 11.30 with a 3.30 weigh in. And within 15 minutes, with the camera not even on, cause I went out there just, I, the camp battery had died and I just ran out there and I literally caught, I might've caught them on consecutive cast. I think it was five or six cast. I put three solid two, two and a quarter pound fish in the boat, just bang, bang, bang. And it's a spot where usually if they're there, you're either going to catch Kentuckys, and if you are, you should leave, or you're going to catch largemouths, and if they are, you should stay. And these were all largemouths. And my immediate thought was, oh, crap, the deep fish bit. Because, I mean, I caught them just boom, boom, boom. And then they kind of shut off, which is typical out there. The schools will move in, and they'll move out. And we bang around. And, again, I got not a lot else to go to except back to my shallow fish. I'm sorry, and I should back up. I went back to my shallow fish a second time. I made another pass through them because the wind come up, didn't get bit again. So, you know, now it's 11, it's probably noon, and I've got three. And my co-angler catches, uh, Denny caught, I guess, two out there. So we've caught a lemon out there, just five fish between us. And his are solid two-pound fish, too. And I'm about to leave, and I get a bite, and it's a three-and-a-half-pounder. And I'm like, okay. Three and a half pounders will get me a check. Because I'm really thinking, as is typical on Rayburn in an individual tournament, 14 to 16 pounds to get a check. And Tricky worm. Up in my hook out. Sure did. That's a nice fish. No J 
giant, but it's four. Just to show y'all I'm not joshing you, because I know a lot of tour guys are watching. We are out here. There's a few fish out here. <laughs> and so now I've got just over almost almost ten and a half pounds in a live well. And uh, I realized with four fish that I've got to catch a four pounder to get a check. And I'm not seeing four although I had just caught a three pounder out there. You know, by that point I had probably been out there two hours, hour and a half, two hours, and I felt like I gotta go catch some better fish. And I'm I'm so <laughs> I ran some more shallow water, didn't get a bite. Thought, all right, well, let's get our limit fish and, and go on to the house. Went out on another little deep spot uh, on a long, long, long point. There's some grass up shallow, but I was way, way outside. And the guys inside of me were catching little fish. And uh, I caught a short fish, and I caught a bunch of short fish throughout the day. And then I caught a, uh, uh, oh, and then Denny caught a three pounder, uh, a solid three pounder. So now he's got three that weigh probably seven, seven and a half pounds and I break a fish off. Now, I broke him off on the leader. Uh, I, I don't know, it could have been again, 10 inch or 10 pounder, who knows. But, uh, and then I catch a fish on my last cast. So in the last 15 minutes, I break a fish off and I catch a short fish. And I was disappointed. Uh, I have no intent of going to the regional. Uh, and this is a way to make sure that I don't later think, oh, I want to go to the regional because I do not want to go to Table Rocks. It just doesn't suit me and it's a week more out of my life that I just don't want to do. So I asked Denny, I said, do you want to weigh your fish? Now Denny's, Denny's from Toledo, he's from Louisiana, but he has a camp on Toledo and he knows just like I do what it takes to get a check in one of these BFLs. And he said, I don't want to stand in that bag line. We got 460 anglers fishing. You know, we might literally be there two, two and a half hours trying to get weighed in. Come to find out, I heard you didn't have to because the fishing was so tough. But we jointly made the decision to release our fish. So uh, it cost me $150. It cost Denny $75. And I called him last night to apologize. And he said, you don't have to apologize for nothing. We had a great time. We, I really enjoyed fishing with him. We, we reminisced a lot. He knows a lot of the old Texas guys that I know and Louisiana guys as well. So we had a real nice time fishing together. But we made a joint decision not to weigh our fish. And uh, we both gave somebody a check because whoever got the last place check on both sides would have got bumped had we weighed our fish. So whoever that is, congratulations. But uh, so I, you know, it's decisions. Again, it's not a decision I regret greatly. Had I intended to go to the regional, I certainly would have went up and weighed my fish. Uh, but I knew going into this tournament, I've got a conflict on another BFL that I can't fish. So there was no reason to really get too strong up about this. And again, $150, $75 for Denny's not going to affect our retirement plans. But uh, so let's go. I'll show you now what little bit of fishing I captured. Again, I probably caught a dozen fish throughout the day, four keepers. I don't know how many I have on camera because that's a long day to only have that few of bites. But I'll show you what I caught. 14 and a half, I think. Benny just put one in the boat there for you. So we've had a rough morning. Uh, we uh, we ran all the stuff I thought we might catch them shallow. And with this bluebird cold front, there are no fish shallow. So we've got out here on one of my deep holes. We're sitting in 33 feet of water. And uh, of course with the camera not running, we pulled up and I caught three and missed one. And that's Denny's second one. We've been out here about 30 45 minutes so if we can get them fired back up again we ca I caught those three just bang 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 so I have hopes that we can uh, finish off our limits out here and at least be respectable and maybe go get lucky and catch a big one because we catch a big one out here 
big ones live out here I've caught them out here so we're gonna keep trying I'm gonna change our angle just a little bit Denny I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna have a talking to you you're like them high school kids get the ruler out and not put it up GoPro stop you see here in this footage where I did catch these fish was super super deep uh, so there you go. Uh, sorry this isn't great footage. Hopefully we'll have better footage. Well, I've got some great footage coming from practice. Uh, and then we got bass champs coming up next weekend. So I hope to see you guys down here. Thanks to all the guys who walked up and introduced themselves at the, uh, the BFL uh, meeting Friday night. I enjoyed meeting all you guys. It's fun to put a face with all the names of guys I'm talking to online. So if you see me out, please say hello. Uh, I always enjoy meeting the guys and the girls who, who watch my videos and who don't watch my videos just to say hello and make new friends. So thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys. You'll see me again a couple of times this week, but I'll see you guys back down here at Rayburn next weekend. Thanks, guys. I, have, I got two questions I want to answer real quick in this video. Uh, first question was somebody asked me, what do I clean my hummingbirds with? I clean them with that. It's a Windex. And by the way, if you, do, if you go on any, actually, hummingbird, Lawrence, Garmin, uh, any of the... Uh, any of the fishing forums they'll show you, you want to use an ammonia-free window cleaner. That keeps, same thing by the way you want to use on your sunglasses. It keeps from taking the protection off the screen. So make sure you get ammonia-free. I had a guy ask me, um, how do I see what my waypoint format is on my hummingbird unit? So I'm going to show you, but first thing I'm going to show you is, so I'm in the boat barn. And I don't have a GPS signal in here. So the way I pull up my map when I want to look at stuff in the boat barn is you see right there, press menu for startup options. If you'll press menu, you can drop down there to simulator mode and then just enter it like you would enter it anyway. And now it's going to pull up the radar screens and a bunch of other things this, that you have the possibility of using. But now you can scroll through all of your different options and it's going to pull up your map now. It's going to pull up your map in some really, really random spot in the country. Let me get to it. So there you go. So you've got to back out and figure out where in the world it's put you. So I'm on Lake Sydney Lanier. So you just hit minus a bunch of times till you get a big map. And now you can scroll over wherever you want to look at. Right? So I could go over here. I'll just start looking for waypoints. There we go. And somewhere over there, you're going to see a whole bunch of waypoints, and that would be Rayburn and Toledo. Now, specific question was, how do I see the format so that I can match what I find on Google Earth to the format on my GPS unit? It's very, very simple. You're going to go menu, menu. So after you go menu, menu, it's going to pull up here, and you see you have tabs across the top. So you've got your sonar, you got your nav, you got your chart, you got your hummingbird chart, if your unit has hummingbird charts on there. And then you have uh, setup. And what you want to do is you want to go down here. By the way, you got to make sure that you are in user mode custom or some units it will say advanced as opposed to angler or I can't remember what it says other than advanced. But make sure you're either on it custom or advanced. And you simply go down here and it's going to tell you right there, position format. Let's go, let's move it up centered screen. So you see provision, I can't say it, position format. I'm in uh, decibels, minutes, minutes. And again, we've talked about this before. There's several of them. I leave mine in that one because that's the format I'm accustomed to and I know it when I see it. So you want to make sure that's where you get it and you just simply match it to whatever it is on your unit. And you're actually real easy to way to see it is when you start moving that cursor, you see immediately it pops up right there, and that's how I know where that is. Let me show you one other little neat thing that I use a lot running down the lake. Okay, so a lot of you guys ask me about uh, the, how do I find the boat lanes, what, where are the boat lanes ship on Rayburn? Uh, and and I've, all, I've told everyone I've, I get nothing from these guys, but if you Google search Lance Vicks boat lanes, there's a, there's a download you can buy, and you simply install it on your unit. Now, there's a trick to it, just so you know. Before you install that on your unit, you've got to go over here to
to the nav tab and you've got to drop down here and you got to say save track defaults and you got to make sure when you go to save your default tracks that you put a solid line in there otherwise I'm going to show you how it looks and unfortunately the only downside I see to my hummingbird units is every time I do a reset where you go in and have to where you update your units it flips your saved tracks back to a very very faint dotted line there is a track right there that's the long cut you can't see it I know you can't see it because I can't see it there it is you can see it when I change the map when I originally saved them on here it'll show up that way so the, the, the way to be able to see it running down the lake is to go to menu menu again and go over to your hummingbird charts and drop down and turn your contour lines off now you can see that line much simpler and obviously or if you don't know you can also change the colors of your charts so again I'm under hummingbird chart depth colors and if you go to that darker one it's a whole lot easier to see that little dotted line now again it's according to the color you saved it but you can play with these so in the morning or anytime if you're needing to make a run where you've got to follow a track turn your contour lines off and change your the map behind it so that you have a nice uh, a contrast so you can see to run down the lake that now gets a whole lot easier to run than it did when I had all of my contour lines on there right you got all those contour lines on there it gets a whole lot harder to run that so that's just a little helpful tip on your hummingbirds uh, because I had a couple of questions so I thought I'd share those with you <music>